What's up everyone, DJ Sai here. And for this video I wanted to do something a little bit different. And uh, one of the things that I really enjoy doing outside of playing Yu-Gi-Oh! is commentating Yu-Gi-Oh! And uh, especially semi-high level matches just because there's a lot of intricacies that you can analyze and you can see where they went right, where they went wrong, and you know, grow from it. So I think a good structure for my channel will be during the week from maybe Monday to uh, Monday, Monday through Thursday, I'll make a video talking about some sort of topic in the game or something that effect, like my previous videos. And then on Friday or Saturday, I'll make a video that will be a commentary. Because the cool part about commentary is in terms of the learning process is when you hear it, it's everything culminating together in the game. Like every factor that I can talk about all at once. So it can be a better learning experience for that. And then if I talk about something... I'll note down some things that I notice, and then for the upcoming week, I'll maybe talk about those topics in more detail, just to uh, tie everything together. So, uh, for this match, we have Necroz versus Yang Zings. I got this video from Team APS on YouTube, so shout out to them. Go subscribe to them. They have they have a lot of matches like this, and you can watch them. And they have pretty high level players. Uh, this is from Yugo Dan. It's Necroz versus Yang Zings. I thought it was interesting that. This is a matchup that most people don't get to see very often, so I think, but I think it has interesting dynamics that we can talk about in this commentary. So, just a little bit of background. I think uh, what they're both what both decks are trying to do. I think Yang Zing, basically any deck that's not Necroz at the moment, is going to be trying to s stop Necroz from actually playing Yu-Gi-Oh, except except for maybe Cosmo. But for the most part, the Yang Zing player, or basically Burning Abyss, should all the Telonite, they're going to be trying to not let Yang, not let, they're going to try to stop Necroz from even playing. They're going to try and floodgate them out of the game. That's basically how they win. And Necroz, if they can get through all of the opponent's floodgates, they're going to win because if Necroz and some other deck's engine, like if Necroz, if the Necroz engine and the Yang Zing engine play together straight up with no floodgates involved, the Necroz engine is going to win simply because it's a better engine and it's a better tech. But that, that's not to say Yang Zing can't win. Yang Zing still has some potential and has some very interesting things that it can do to combat Necroz, so we'll see how well the player does. Yeah, let's start. Summons Jiao Tu, sends two, sends two of the tuner. And this is interesting. If he knew if he knows he's playing against Necroz, what he can do is he can get the uh, he can get the water guy. And let's see what that guy what the guy's level is. Four, so yeah, he can get the water guy and the level five, and he can make this and the uh, Chao Fang, and this stops the opponent from using. Like, if you read the effect, when Synchro Summon your opponent cannot activate effects of monsters with the same original attribute as the Yang Z monsters used for the Synchro Summon of this card. So, if he uses the water guy, and he'll be using two dark guys, but then his opponent won't be able to use the effects of any water monsters for the, while the monsters face up on the field. That's a really strong against a really strong play against Necroz, a really strong turn one play. In fact, probably the strongest turn one play he has. And when it gets destroyed, you can you get to add a tuner monster and then when it kills monsters. So it, it's got a lot of cool effects. But I don't know if he's I don't think he's playing I don't think he knows he's playing against Necroz. Since it's just I think it's uh let's see if they have it in the description. No they don't. I think it's just a match from from the Swiss rounds. So they probably don't know what he's playing against just yet. But he grabs the. There's a Zephyr guy under this. He he grabbed the this guy Suwani, and he grabbed the level six Zephyr guy. He grabbed this guy. Um, it doesn't really do anything. It's just a level six, but it lets him make Baxia turn one. So he makes Baxia, and then he's gonna destroy that to bring something back. Destroy the Suwani to bring something back. Brings back the tuner. Uses Suwani. He can make. Yeah, he can make Herald of Arclight here. Most definitely. And it'll be a Herald of Arclight that can't die by battle. That's the, the Beyond. This guy, when he's used for Synchro Summon of a monster, they can't die by battle. So against against Necroz, it's really strong if you make a Herald of Arclight that can't die by battle. If they don't have Regeki or Book of Moon, they're not going to be able to play, really. So I guess that's what he's going to do. Maybe he does know he's playing against. Yeah, go away. <laughs> <laughs> that was random. But yeah, he does make Herald of Arclight. So this kind of begs the question of, does he know he's playing against Necroz or not? Because I don't, this turn one play is pretty solid against every deck, but I think it's the only the only deck you'd 
make it against be against Necroz for the most part. So that would be inter some, something interesting to know. And then he plays Path, so he's opening really strong here. Going to end his turn with five cards, so he didn't even mind us to do all that. He did all that stuff for uh, for free. And <clears throat> yeah, if Necroz doesn't have an out to this in like the next couple of turns, he's going to lose. He's just going to he's just going to die because Spaxia is twenty three. If he summons another Yang Zing monster, he can. Uh, or maybe not. No, no, never mind. He wouldn't be able to use the effect to get banished by Arclight. But yeah, he's still he would be taking twenty and twenty nine every turn, so he can only do he can only take three twenty nines. Oh, that sucks. Now he just drew Maxi. That would have been pretty solid last turn. Actually, it's Kaleidoscope. Okay. Yeah, Kaleidoscope's not a cost. Uh, as this is the case with every ritual card, so he's he can still send Harold to summon Unicorn from his from his hand. He won't get a search, obviously, he'll just be banished, but Yeah. What's Baxia's defense? Twenty six? Yeah. Even if a unicorn is here, uh Harold will be negated, so he, nothing will be banished, but still won't die by battle because it's by the beyond effect. Level three zang zing. So I don't know how he's gonna kill that outside of uh outside of trishing him, honestly. That's the only route he really has. <clears throat> Either Regeki or Trish or Book of Moon if he plays it. So why is he searching? What the heck is what the heck's going on here? What why is that oh Yeah, no, that should be banished, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that Herald should be banished that he sent. It gets sent before he summons it, so... That Herald should definitely be banished. I guess I guess that's this is going to slip by. Once Unicorn's on board, then Herald's negated, so the Brio and the Clausless are going to go through, but that, sh that Brio shouldn't even be in his hand. Okay, well, I guess we'll just continue. So Brio got Shrit, Clausus got Cycle, he plays Cycle, he's gonna bring back Brio. Uh huh, okay. Solid. If that Brio goes through, he's gonna be in a really good position. <clears throat> he's gonna manage to resolve that Trish too. That would be insane. Yeah, I guess if he has Mirror in hand or. Yeah, he has to have mirror in hand, but if he has mirror in hand, he's in a solid position. Because, okay, the fact that he set it up like this pretty much indicates that he, this isn't torrential because he made a board. And uh, most people, it's not a good idea to make a board with torrential because then you have to destroy this in order to destroy his most monsters. If he had torrential, he would probably just set it without doing much last turn, or maybe just set it with the Yang Zing monster. But, yeah, torrential would kind of suck for him, but I think it would, the card advantage would end up even. So yeah, I, I don't think it's torrential. It wouldn't really make sense for it to be torrential. He wouldn't he wouldn't make Harold with, with the torrential set because it's not like it's not like he's playing Necroz. It's not like the Yangzing player is playing Necroz where he can just uh where he can just search off of the Herald if it gets if it dies. So but Okay. Let's see. He plays rear and gets skill drained. Okay. He just ends his turn. <clears throat> yeah, okay, so the Necro player isn't necessarily in trouble. He has Trish, Maxi, I think he's I think I saw a Valk in some other spell. I think it's I think a spell card. It might be the mirror that we thought he had. So, okay. Necro's player is not in such a bad position, but he's gonna have to get he's gonna have to out that skill drain before he can actually play. Or just like he has to deal with a skill drain and a herald of arc light. He can't out that battle, and he can't he can't out the herald with a monster anymore. So he either has to draw an MSD to out the skill drain, or he has to draw Regeki or Book of Moon. And he'll have to wit kill that Baxi that's twenty six hundred defense. So he'll have to summon Trish or, Val or Valkyrus or Decisive Armor. Okay. Sets one to each zone. Okay, not bad. I think he drew Unicorn. 
he just ends his turn. Hmm. Part of me would have wanted him to wanted to see him maybe attack and drop Maxi. Because I don't think he's going to get any value out of Maxi anymore for a while. So I, I would like to see him just attack, draw Maxi, attack into the set and draw Maxi in an attempt to draw cards after. Because it's, I mean, the set's most likely a Yang Zing monster. So just try and thin it out his deck. I don't know if he mains in his tier now, but we'll find out. And he flips Swanee. I wonder if he plays. I wonder if he plays Crazy Box. Then he could make it with Harold. But I don't think. I don't think he's gonna want to get rid of that Harold. Hmm. Summons Beyond. Huh. Well, if, if his intention is to crash both of those monsters to get bigger ones, then. The Necros player could get a little bit more value out of his maxi than he could have if he just dropped it last turn and attacked. Oh, that's that's <laughs> he just grabs the monster out of his graveyard and puts oh that's a little disrespectful. But okay. So does he is he using he didn't even use the effect. That's I can I can get behind that. I guess. You don't want to give your opponent let your opponent dig into more answers to skill drain. I don't know though. Cause the thing is he has this skill drain, he has this solid setup, but he has to actually win the game. <laughs> he has to actually get through that unicorn the Brio and he has to summon a bigger monster. So the fact that he kinda just gave up one of his Yangzing monsters, it, it stops him because he, he's gonna wanna summon Yazi, I'm guessing. That would be the best way to get over that board. That's, the only, that's actually the only way I can think of to get over that board. So I think, I don't know. I, I, I guess there's arguments for both. If he has another Yangxing monster in his hand, then yeah, he could just do the same play next turn. So we'll see. I see a Senju, Unicor, Trish, Valk. I don't think a spell card. Probably Mirror. Hmm. He could. Yeah, never mind. That's not. Oh, okay. He had creation. Okay, so last turn would have been really sick if his opponent had the maxi. That's pretty solid that he didn't flip it right away. Yeah, that's a good play. He didn't flip the creation on the first attack. He flipped it on. The, he was gonna flip it on the second attack after he knew his opponent didn't have maxi. Solid. Very solid. That way, if he, uh, that way his opponent didn't know he had creation, and uh, he would have got the same result out of it. So yeah, very good. I like that. He has another level six guy, or I think he put it back with create with a uh, path. So gets the level six guy, gets Chi Wen, gets the tuner. Most likely gonna make Yazi here. Well, he can make Yazi, or he could sit on that for a second and try and get more value out of that creation. Hmm. Now I'm guessing he's going to get the level 2 guy. Or maybe not. He might just catch some random Yang Zing attack and then get two monsters next turn. Those are both okay plays. He, he's eventually... He, his goal, the Yang Zing player's goal right now is to get over that board as fast as he can before his opponent outs that skill drain. Because as soon as the opponent outs that skill drain, that board's not hard to clear at all for Necros. They can just Brio away the extra deck monsters. Trish the rest of it, and then he's going to have no cards. So this is a race to see whether the Angsing player will win the game or the Necros player will draw the out to skill drain. Yeah, he valks it. <clears throat> this is just buying him another turn. I don't think he has another... What is he doing? Oh, he negated the Valk. Okay. Oh, he's gonna make a...
What is that? Is that a Yangzing monster? Let's find out. Oh, it's the wind guy. Right? I think that's what that is. What did he do? Let's go let's go back a little bit. Wait, I'm confused. Did he get three monsters? He attacked with the 2200 guy. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. He attacked with the 2200 guy, negated the Valkyrus, brought back the tuner, and got two monsters. Okay. What does this guy do again? This one makes it unaffected by spells? Yeah. So he can make he can make a Trish that's unaffected by skill drain. Like a synchro Trish. <laughs> not the not gonna cross Trish. Or Yeah, it's not, or he can make a Baxia and return one of his cards. But I think I think Trish is just a better player, right? Yeah, that's what I think he's gonna do. He's gonna Trish him and get rid of the Unicorn. I think. Yeah, get rid of the Unicorn. Yeah, he's going to make Trish. Yeah. Alternatively, he could have made... Could have made this guy. Or not that guy. This guy. It would be unaffected by traps and his opponent couldn't use... Couldn't use lights... That actually might have been a little bit better, because then his opponent couldn't use light monsters effects, and his opponent couldn't use water monsters effects. I don't know. Uh, the offensive Trish play is also pretty good. Hmm. I'm trying to think which one would be better. Let's see, what factors do we have to consider? Uh, I think I like the Chow Fang a little bit better than I like the Trish, just because if he outs the the Skill Drain, basically he has to out both Skill Drain and the monster, because they're both like acting as Skill Drains, basically. I mean, that monster's acting as a pure Skill Drain, because he can't use Light Monster's effects, and he can't use Waters. So then he wouldn't be able to use any either Jew, and he wouldn't be able to use any of his Necroz monsters. So basically, his only out to that board would be Regeki, or I guess Book of Moon. But then even if he Book of Moon, it, he would have, still have to out the Skill Drain. So the real only answer would be Regeki. In this case, he's getting rid of some of his opponent's cards, but I I don't think the Trish is going to do much. Like the Trish is going to get rid of a sufficient amount of cards, but if I think if the Necros player draws an out to skill drain, he'll still be able to Brio bounce his, his extract monsters and then Trish him. So I, I think I would have liked making Chow Fang a little bit better. I think it just would have been a little bit more solid. I'm not crazy, right? He can still do that. Yeah, yeah, you could have done that instead. So that, that, that would have been a little bit better. But I don't I don't blame him for going for the Trish, but We'll, we'll see if it makes a difference. That's Gungnir out of his hand. Oh, he had Gungnir. Okay. So I guess he never had Mirror. Yeah, see, after this Trish, if the guy on the left would have drawn and out to Skill Drain, he would have Brio on board. So he would have... He, if he draw if he draws MST for the skill drain, he bounces both the extra monsters away, and then the guy's setup is completely broken. Yeah, I, I would have liked Chaofeng better. I think Chaofeng was just objectively better. So 
So Unicorn's back, Valken ends his turn. That's all I can really do. He's kind of just sitting on a Brio. He can't even make a running four if he wanted to. So. The problem is that now the Yangzing monsters, the Yangzing player is getting more back rows, and those could be like emptiness and other floodgates to not let the Necros player play. Yeah, I think the Necros player realizes that if he loses that Brio, he's probably going to lose the game even if he does draw MST, just because the Necros player has so many back rows. Or the Yangzing player has so many back rows. Excuse me. So, I think, yeah, I mean, it's pretty solid that he realizes that his Brio is his win condition. But. I don't know if I don't think he means MST, or he might actually. I I can't really say. He had kaleidoscope and unicorn. Uh, I don't know. He doesn't want to waste his kaleidoscopes, both his kaleidoscopes. But I think I would. He it also would be pretty good for him to just try and thin his deck. Because ultimately his win condition is draw MST or draw Regeki. And actually I don't even think draw Regeki's in it. Draw Regeki's a very good out because he's going to get three monsters. Or two, right? What does Baxi, what does Baxi do when it dies? Oh, it doesn't do anything when it dies. Okay, so he would have only got two monsters. But he still got two Yangzing monsters after the Regeki, and he would still have to skill drain to a skill drain to deal with. Yeah, so the Necros player doesn't have Valk anymore, so he's gonna start taking damage. I think that's first damage to him, so he'll take four hundred and twenty-three. So he'll take twenty-seven. And he draw. I think he drew another Unicorn. Vanishes for virtual spell to get mirror. Rhoda. I mean, he could just summon decisive armor and take advantage of the fact that decisive armor is huge. Did he scoop? He scooped, right? Yeah, okay, he scooped. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he scooped a little too early. Maybe he just maybe he just kind of gave up on the position and didn't want to go to time, which is which is fair enough. I mean, if both the, if one of those two back rows is emptiness, or some answer to the monster that the guy on the left summons, then I mean it, it doesn't really matter. It would still be game over next turn if he's only fifty three. So, yeah, fair enough. I don't I don't blame him for scooping. Mm, yeah. Okay. Yangsing player goes first. Sets a monster. Sets three. Not bad. Depends on what his sets are. And someone sends you. Mistake? No mistake, okay. Well, at least the Necros player gets to play for a little while. Yeah, this is where this is where Necros, you can tell that Necros is, the Necros engine is just a little bit better than Yangzing Yang deck. The Yangzing deck, all Yangzing can really do is set monsters and wait for you to attack into them. Like, they 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 get their advantage by getting their monsters to dive up battle to your monsters, and it's like they can't they can't accumulate advantage on their own. That's the problem. That's always been the problem with that deck. Necros can summon Senjus and play Kaleidoscopes and gain advantage all day. But so, uh, yeah, unfortunately, if Yangzing had a way to destroy its own cards, like had a way to destroy its own monsters that wasn't like Thundercrash or Nefarious Archfiend Eater of Nefariousness. Like, if they had something a little bit better, like, if they had a Yangzing monster that actually did that, or, you know, so something that they could search so that they could do it, besides Baxi, obviously, I think they would have a little bit better of a chance to be good. Because now, in order for them to get their engine going, they have to wait for the opponent to attack into their monsters, or wait for the opponent to leave a big monster on board so they can attack into themselves. Either way, it's not, it's not something optimal you want to do. You're basically putting your... Putting your engine, like putting the success of your engine in the hands of the opponent and depending on what they do. Which isn't, I don't think it's ever a solid play. So Kaleidoscopes for Unicor. No Mind Crush either. Jeez.
What the heck does the Yangtze player have set? Just a bunch of just a bunch of creations. I I think is he just has a bunch of creations or bluffs set because I mean he didn't have a floodgate. He didn't have a finish or a breakthrough because he probably would. Well, maybe not. Yeah, he probably wouldn't finish a break to the Senju. I think he would wait on, wait for a Trish play or something. But yeah, so it's like he didn't have a Floodgate and he doesn't have Mind Crush. Those are two solid. Maybe he has Mirror Force set. My guess would be he either has Battle Trap set or like Creations and Bluffs. Maybe, yeah, maybe Mirror Force. <clears throat> the Necros player is probably going to make Diamond Dire and go for Trish. That would be my guess. And, okay, Dweller. That's also pretty good, but he gets breakthrough. Man, yeah. he he held the breakthrough. Probably a good idea. Any NMST? Okay. Oh, I don't like that. No, 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 no. Don't. No, 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 no. That's bad. That's not. That's not good. Don't MST. If the only reason MST is in that Yangzing player's deck is for decree, and he MST it before he even knew it was decree. That's the big, big no-no. The Necros player could have just as easily set up set a, a ritual spell as a bluff, and then the Yangzi player didn't have MST to use. So yeah, definitely not a good idea to do that. The, the, they didn't like, for example, if the Necros player set a ritual spell and they MST it, and then drew a decree, and the Necros player draws a decree and sets decree, then he doesn't have an out for the decree unless he has two MSTs. Which I mean, he could since he didn't flip the other set. So if he has two MSTs, I can understand his. Uh, want to do that, but I still think he should have held that MST, because that's literally only in his deck for Decree. So he should have, and he can just change it to Decree anyway. So, I, uh, yeah. Also the Breakthrough, he could have waited until the Necros player attacked with the Weller to Breakthrough. It depends on if he has, that kind of tells me that he doesn't have Creation, because I think he would have wanted to do that and wanted his monster to die and not get affected by Dweller in order to get two monsters. So maybe his other set is another MST. We'll see. I think it was Mirror Force he would do it on the Dweller. Okay, that's a mistake. What? No, 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 no. He has to do something. That Dweller was 22. Yeah, that's about 2200 because it has a unicorn material. He would have to... He has to break through it in order to get over that. Okay, that's... Uh, slip up number two. Yeah, I don't think that... Yeah, that's one should have died. Let's we'll see if they recognize it. But... It's not a big deal. He could just break through the Dweller. And it would be the same result. But now he has a break, another breakthrough grip. I don't, I don't think that breakthrough will ever come up, but you know, it's still something to make a note of. Hmm. Okay. Banishes to get cycle. My thought is go for Trish <laughs> or some decisive armor. But I, th I think I like go for Trish a little bit better, or he I, he might be able to summon both. Device of armor, and he gets Trish. So he uh, he has mirror in hand, or a way to get to mirror. I think he decisive armor is probably not the back row. I would decisive the monster and then Trish the other monster, because that back row that back row is pretty dead, just from the way that the Yangzing players been playing. And yeah, he makes the, I think the right play, and he decisive armor is the monster. And he ends his turn. Trish in hand with decisive armor is still solid. He, any targeting trap he does to negate decisive armor. Like if he would have finished in the decisive armor, break the skill of the decisive armor, then it wouldn't have mattered. Because he would have just gave it Trish. He would have had to do that before the shred search. So if he had Phoenix chain, that kind of tells me this isn't a Phoenix chain either. Because if it was, then he would have or at least he should have flipped it before the shred search if he's going to finish in the decisive armor. And then at least he would have kept his monster. So it tells me it's not finished a breakthrough, so it's either... It, it doesn't, I don't think it's a battle trap either, so it quite honestly might just be another MST. Or creation. 
He attacked into the monster. He attacked into size of armor, so maybe it is creation. And sets another and plays a Zephra. Which one is it? What's that one do? So he's playing both a level three and a level six Zephra. That's pretty cool. Pendulum is a special summon from the main deck. You can target one Yang Zing or a Z for you control. I'm also treated as a tuner. Not bad. I think the other one's better. When it's, when it's Pendulum Summon, you get to add something to your hand, right? When it's Pendulum Summon, you get to add a Yang Zing or a Z for spell or trap card. So you, that lets you add creation or path. That's pretty good. I can see why you would want to play those. It might be, it might be a little bit bricky. And a little that combo might be a little bit gimmicky, but I can get why people would want to play that. Mm. I don't like that either. Why do you go for the back row now? It, it's a path. I mean, it, it, yeah. So it turned out to it turned out to just be a bluff, which I mean is equally as possible as any of the other op options that I mentioned. I mean, he wasn't flipping it. But why would you banish the set? Like his dwell is already gone too, so why would he banish the set, the back row, if he knew last turn it all that went through, and he didn't flip this? He banished the the monster. He banished the set monster. So why would you banish the set monster last turn, and then after nothing has changed, now banish the back row? That's not. That doesn't make any sense. I would just I would just keep banishing the monsters. I don't get why you wouldn't want to just keep banishing the monsters. I think you just kind of have to assume that back row is a bluff or an MST since he hasn't flipped it for anything. And he's in his turn. I don't know. I can understand why he ends his turn. Maybe he, maybe attacking the Swanee would have been okay to get, just get some damage in. But now he's forcing because he's not at risk of it getting pathed with only one monster in graveyard. But the Yangzing player does it himself. Takes fourteen hundred. <clears throat> and he can get. He gets another one of the. Is it the same Ziffer guy? I think it is. He plays a lot of Yang Zings in his deck. So he makes the Suwani a tuner. Right, that's what he did. Yeah, he does this, makes Suwani a tuner. Suwani tuner makes Yazi. And that gets pumped by 500. Wait. Is there something I'm missing? That was the Zephyr guy, right? They summoned. I'm confused. What just happened? Yeah, that's the Zephyr guy. They look, they look exactly the same. Or is that a level four? That's a level three. So he did that, made it, made the Yazi a tuner, or made the Suwani a tuner, brought out Yazi. It gets boosted by 500 by Suwani. Oh, oh, he did the Scrap Dragon effect. Okay. So he popped it to pop. Oh, okay. I, get it. I understand. No, I thought he attacked. Okay, he used the effect, and now he's gonna get another Yang Zing. I think that guy, that guy, should go to the bottom of the deck because he used it. Because he's not a tuner, and Sawani's not a tuner. So yeah, I should go to the bottom of the deck. Gets another one of the Ziffer guys. Level six. What, what's that guy's stats?
Zero twenty six hundred. A lot of defense. But he has no cards in hand now. And he had to do a, a lot of stuff just to get rid of a size farmer that can come back next turn <laughs> with cycle. I think he's realizing now that the card should go to the bottom of the deck. Maybe not, maybe not. Okay, whatever. It's Mirror. Um, he can't go for Trish because he has no cards in hand. Or his opponent has no cards in hand. Could just go, could just summon to Scythe Armor again. Just cycle it back with Shrit. I think that's what he's going to do, yeah. That's really hard for Yang Zing to deal with. Oh, uh, flips lose a turn. Okay. That was a pretty good draw, but next turn he's going to be able to switch it again. That could slow down, that's going to slow down the Necroz player for a little bit. I think he's going to try to just make a Castell and then get the Castell to go off the turn after. To shuffle back the lose one turn or shuffle back the monster. Because any, any card that the Yangzing player sets now is going to get banished by the size form, but that's why it's so good to resolve it. And if it, if it sticks to the board, any card they set after it's on the field, if they don't get rid of it, they're just going to be throwing away cards. It's just going to get banished. So it's a, it's always a good thing. Against most rogue decks, the size farm is usually the way to go. Against against heavy back row decks, you can grind you can grind a lot of back row that way. So yeah, draws. What's what's Necroz? What's this? Damn it! I keep timing out. What's his defense? Twenty-three. Okay, he can kill that pretty easily if he makes another Yazi. But well, actually, it would go to defense because it loses a turn. So yeah, and the Necros player drew another decree. So I think I think that's pretty much the end of the game. He's gonna, okay. That's a pretty good card. I don't think it's gonna matter too much because he's just gonna get another monster. It's gonna have to switch to defense because it loses a turn. The Necros player is gonna flip decree. Add another. Oh, wait, how is that happening? Oh, it's just when, anytime it's destroyed. That's really good. It's just add add anything path. That's that's solid. I get why he plays so many of them now. That's that's a really good card. Anything that lets you that lets you search your best card is a. Uh, Generally pretty good. It lets you search both create like the next best cards in Yang Zing are creation and path, so a card that lets you search both of those is really solid. So okay, nice, nice. And attacks for nineteen. Okay. I can get behind that. That's basically his only win condition is attack for damage at this point. <laughs> yeah, he flipped a Kree and then drew MST. So I think he's just going to get trished. I think he's just going to get trished. His monster's going to go away. I think trish the monster go for game. That's what I think is going to happen. He's taking Graveyard. He has so many cards. He has to be able to go for game. What's he even thinking about? This is the thing, like, when you have certain game like that and you think for a while, you're wasting time. And that can come back to bite you later because you can go at a time and then lose in time. And you'll wish that you would have played a little bit faster. Why is he? Just, <laughs> just Trisha, man. That's all you gotta do. If Trish gets if the Trish gets Valored, whatever. He 
Yeah, if Trish gets Veiled, whatever, you still have so much advantage that doesn't matter. So, Claudius go for Unicorn. Okay, combo extender. Now he gets Gungnir. Okay, it's Valkyrie. I don't know why he'd even want Gungnir in the first place. Well, actually, no, he could. Well, here's what he could do he has MST in hand. He could summon Gungnir. If he doesn't want to trish the monster away, what he can do is summon Gungnir, go to battle phase to play around Valor, because then if the opponent Valors, then you can chain. Uh, Chain just chain Gungnir's effect, pop the Yangzi monster. The Yangzi monster will miss timing because they're all win win you can effects. If he doesn't Valor in battle phase, then you MST the face down and then chain Gungnir's effect, destroy it, and make it miss timing. So that could be a good play if he wants to play around. If he wants to, if he's worried about his Trish getting Valor, then not have, being able to go for a game this turn. But he does neither of those things and just ends the turn. Hmm. Could he really not? No, he had mirror. He could definitely have done the play I just said. He also could have just gone for Trish. I don't. I don't like this. I don't like this. He's playing a little too slow. He's not. He's not going. He's not going for the kill when he should be. I don't, I don't know what you could possibly be scared of. You have Decree, you have MST. He's just not going for the kill. He's not going for it. I think I, think I saw a Regeki in his hand too. Yeah, I don't like that. I don't, I don't get why he got Valk. Now he's letting the Gangsing monster, the Gangsing player, draw a lot of cards, and now he actually has stuff he can do. We're gonna make our Mades, and the Mades is gonna be bigger than Unicorn because it's gonna get pumped by 500 because of Suwani. So now it's a 2,800 our Mades. The Armadies will be negated by Unicor, so if the Necros player wants to Valk the attack, he can. Yeah, see, now the Yangzi player is getting stuff to do. He Valks the attack. I don't even know why he Valks the attack. I don't, I don't get it, because that, that Armadies is still bigger than your monster. Doesn't he have Regeki in it? I'm pretty sure I saw Regeki. Unfortunately, I, there's no way to make the Yangzings miss time with Regeki, but mm, I don't. What's he gonna do? Was he was he hoping to draw level four and just go for like Diamond Dire or something? But I don't like this. I don't like this at all. He could have gone for the Gungner play like two turns ago. Or two, two or three turns ago, and then he could have just attacked for a lot of damage. And it, basically, the game would have been over. Now, his monster dies, he's stuck holding Typhoon that can't be played because of his decree. He has Typhoon and MST, which are both basically. And he draws upstart. It's Brianac. He literally has all the plays in the world. Plays Mirror. Banishing Shred. Is he going to go for Trish now? There's Trish now. And now it gets Valored. That's, that really sucks because that means he didn't have Valor. Or maybe he did. Maybe he was just holding it the whole time. No, because he definitely had no cards in hand last turn. Pretty sure. Either way, he could have just done the Gungner play that we talked about lot, like four turns ago, and that would have played around that Valor. And then that was only when he had one Yangzing monster, so then he would have had no monsters. And then he could have done a very similar play next turn. Now he just attacks into the 
Yang Zing, and now the guy gets the effect. <clears throat> this, yeah, this is really risky. Because that Armadius is going to play around any Valk that the Necros player has. So, and he's bigger than that Trish. That Armadius is, tw Armadius is 28. See, if the Yang Zing player gets a solid draw, he can just go for game. He can just like flip his monsters and just go for a bunch of push for damage. He's down. He's down like super down in card advantage. Well, actually, I don't think he's even down in card advantage anymore. I think it's relatively even. I don't know how he's managed to bring this back, but he certainly has. No, no, no. The card advantage isn't even. Necros player still has like four cards in hand. But holy moly, uh, card advantage doesn't matter if you have Decree and you're holding Typhoon MST. Typhoon MST are basically dead cards right now. They might come in handy if he somehow outs the Decree, but I don't think the, the I don't think the Yangzing player is trying to out Decree. I think the Yangzing player is just trying to win, <laughs> go for go for game. Play Soul Charge. Now he can Trish him. Looks like that's what he's gonna do. I think that Trish will be like huge too. Trish will be. Can can you get two Swanee effects? Yeah, that'll be a thirty-seven hundred Trish. And I believe he's gonna banish the tr the Necroz of Trish. Chains MST on the set. Fine. He changed MST on the other set, and he changed MST on the loser turn. Yeah, he's just going to leave the decree there. Ooh, hit the Brio out of his hand. That's 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 painful. I think, and then he vanishes the kaleidoscope. Okay. And then all of his backers died. It was a dark hole. He had a dark hole set. So he has a 3700 Trish, a 2800 Armadies. Let's see if he actually had Regeki in his hand when I thought he did. Because if he did, this would be the perfect time to play it. It doesn't look like he did because he probably would have just slapped it on the table already. Looks like he's holding Book of Moon. I think I saw a Ritual Spell. Like Book of Moon, Ritual Spell, some, oh, two other cards. He, he still has that Typhoon from before. He has like no plays. From what I can see, yeah, I think the Necros player is actually going to lose now. That's really unfortunate. He played with his he played with his food too much. He got a little too overconfident in his position, and it's going to cost him really bad. He clauseless, so he has Typhoon. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let's go back to that play we were talking about earlier. See, there's no reason for the Yangzing player to win this game. He has three cards, and the Necros player has decisive armor with five cards in hand, I think, right? I can't really tell. He had six cards in hand. He had Decisive Armor and six cards to his three. He was up four cards in advantage. Well, I guess three if you count the, the Zephra Pendulum as a card. It's not really a card. But he was completely dominant in this game. Like, next turn, he even drew the Decree, so he decrees the lose a turn, and then makes some good play to get rid of the monster, and, and that's it. Now, he drew Dark Hole here, right? Yeah, he drew Dark Hole and got Path. And that was the turn that he summoned Decisive Armor and I got Lose a turn. So, and then he's going to get Path, play Path, draw two cards. So he's going to have four cards, but he's still going to have four cards to the, to the Necros player. Six, seven next turn he draws. Eight if he searches with a Ritual spell. And he has a Decree for Lose a turn. 
Let's find that. Let's find that play. Let's find that play we were talking about. Uh, yeah. So he takes nineteen from the Suwanee. That was when he said, and this is when he flips the decree. And it goes through. Now he has MST, Trish, Clausulus, Kaleidoscope, Mirror. And I think Valkyrus. I can't really see. Let's see, let's see if he flashes it. Yeah, I can't really see, unfortunately. This camera angle kind of sucks. I really want to know his entire hand just so I can for sure know that he could have done that. Yeah, he has Clausless, Trish, Kaleidoscope, MST. Brio 2. Yeah, he can either go for Trish. If he's scared of Valor, he can do the the play I said, where he goes Kaleidoscope into a... Because he can go Brio, get Unicor, Kaleidoscope into Unicor, add Gungnir, play Mirror to summon Gungnir. Uh, by banishing Shred out of his graveyard. Go to Battle Phase. If he Valors, then chain Gungnir effect, pop the monster. If he doesn't Valor, uh, go to Battle Phase, MST the set, chain Gungnir destroy the 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 monster attack for 48 and then he's on a one turn clock and then he has to draw a monster has to draw a yang zing monster nonetheless he has to either draw or have a yang zing monster nonetheless and even if he did the necros player could literally play any card he wants discard clauseless discard uh brio play a spell card play anything and then chain gunner's effect to pop that monster and then he has game but instead he just floats Unicorn. Yeah, I don't know. This was definitely a, a game that the Yangzing player had no business winning. But, but yeah, he did. So, yeah. Good good stuff to the Yangzing player. Um, I would like to I would have liked to see a game 3 in this match. Uh, just because this game was wasn't too exciting, but it is what it is. Yeah, that, that's why that's just a that's just a lesson. It's really important, really really important to uh, take game when you have it and not play around. Like, there's such a thing as being too safe, and I think the Necros player played way too safe this game. And got punished for it. Okay. Well, thanks for, uh, thanks for joining me for this commentary. I know it was a little bit of a longer one. About almost an hour for a 15-minute match. But there's a lot of stuff to go over. And, uh, yeah, hopefully you got something out of this. And if you enjoy commentaries like this, uh, let me know in the comment section, and I'll have more just like it. And don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and if you like videos like this, tell your friends about it. Thanks. We'll see you later.